About a month ago, I posted a video titled, Which Plyometrics Will Help You Dunk a Basketball? And you guys seem to love it. But then I got a bunch of comments asking for another tier list, this time with the best and worst weight training exercises to help you dunk a basketball. And if I gave you the plyometrics, really the only thing missing is the strength training exercises that you can do to increase your vertical jump. So, since I'm a man of the people, I did do you all a favor, and I went back through the countless vertical jump training programs that I have reviewed, and I pulled out the top 40 most common strength training exercises that some of the best trainers and coaches use in their very own vertical jump training program. So today we've got another tier list. Sit back and enjoy because this is the best and worst strength training exercises that you can do to increase your vertical jump and dunk a basketball. All right, here we go. Let's get down to business. The categories for this video are going to be the exact same categories as the last video. The last time that I did a tier list, we have the top tier category. This exercise will cause major adaptations on your vertical jump. Then we have will cause great adaptations will cause good adaptations, will cause minor adaptations. And the bottom category is don't do this exercise. It sucks. I actually don't think that we will have any exercises that make it into this category within this video. However, let's go ahead and start it off with the back squat. We're starting it off very, very strong because the back squat is going to immediately go into will cause major adaptations on your vertical jump. And here's why. This is what I'm really thinking about. If we took a novice athlete and all we did with that novice athlete was a back squat, and I progressive overloaded the back squat properly over a period of weeks and months, how many gains, how many adaptations would he see on his body and his vertical jump? With the back squat, tons. The next exercise, on the contrary, is core training. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Will cause minor adaptations on your vertical jump. And if we think about the same thing, if all that we did with a novice athlete was core training, is a bunch of core exercises going to get his bounce way up? it's probably going to do a little bit, but it's not going to get him any crazy bounce, just simply improving the strength of his core. So core training will cause minor adaptations on his vertical jump. And that is what I am thinking about when I'm making my decisions. That is how I'm categorizing each of these exercises. Next, we have ankle strengthening. Every single athlete should be doing it, but how many gains is going to get you on your vertical jump? I'm going to stick it in minor for now. Ankle strengthening is going to, and when I say ankle strengthening, I'm really talking about dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, ankle inversion, and eversion, because this was seen in a lot of these programs out there, but really improving your dorsiflexion, your plantar flexion, working on that, and most of the time it was banded dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, ankle inversion, and eversion. It is going to cause minor adaptations on your vertical jump. If that's all that you did, simply just ankle strengthening, it's not going to get you any crazy bounce. Next, we have banded kettlebell swings. I was surprised that I saw this in as many programs as I did. I'm stuck between good or great. We could argue that this is a great exercise for your vertical jump. It's great for your posterior chain. Um, it's a good power exercise. You're using the band, so it's going to be great for your stretch shortening cycle. But I'm going to put this in good. Great for explosive hip extension. The angel on this shoulder right here wants me to put it in great adaptations. But the devil is being picky. I'm putting it in good adaptations on your vertical jump. Banded walks I'm going to put into good adaptations on your vertical jump. And because I am putting these in good, I am going to move banded kettlebell swings up to great adaptations. So all that arguing back and forth with myself was for nothing because banded kettlebell swings and banded walks cannot be in the same category because banded kettlebell swings will get you many more gains than banded walks. However, banded walks are going to be better than core training and ankle strengthening. Um, great for the glute medius. If you strengthen your glutes, you're going to see your vertical shoot way up. That was that was stupid. Sorry. Banded quarter squats will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. We could argue, we could say maybe they are in the major adaptations category. However, the reason I like back squats better than banded quarter squats are because banded quarter squats is more of an advanced technique. I'd much rather you do back squats for a long period of time, really strengthen your posterior chain, strengthen your muscles in general, strengthen your system as a whole, and then once you are really strong and you could produce a lot of force, then add in banded quarter squats and get more specific doing your squats at that joint angle. And all that the bands do is make it harder at the top of the rep where you are the strongest and then make it um, easier at the bottom of the rep where you are not as strong. But yeah, banded quarter squats will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. Cable pull throughs will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Great for the posterior chain, great for the hamstrings and the glutes. If you get that booty squeeze at the top of the rep, I'm telling you, 
That's all kinds of games. Personally, I like to do band pull-throughs instead of cable pull-throughs. However, both are going to be good for you. The difference with the bands is, as I just said, for the band of quarter squats, it's going to be harder at the top of the rep where you're trying to lock out that hip extension, and it's going to be easier um, as you are leaning backwards, but it's going to be great for hip extension, great for your post chain, great for the hamstrings and the glutes. Cable pull-throughs will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Next, we have deadlift. Deadlifts I'm putting in will cause major adaptations on your vertical jump. If we have back squat in major adaptations, we have to have deadlift in major adaptations. Deadlifts is one of those compound movements that's going to strengthen multiple muscles in your body. If we took a novice and we taught him the correct form so that he don't hurt his back like Uncle Tommy, he's going to see all kinds of gains from doing deadlifts in his program. I do like trap bar a little bit better for athletes. However, if all that you have is a straight bar, straight bar deadlifts are going to be great. A little bit more posterior chain action, but deadlifts are going to cause major adaptations on your vertical jump. Band good mornings. I did see this one in quite a few programs. I'm going to put band good mornings in will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Personally, when I do band good mornings or when I program band good mornings, which I do have in my own programming, I like them for a bit higher rep. I like to do, um, I actually like to do uh, three sets of 15 band squats going as fast as you can, focusing on the stretch shortening cycle, and then superset immediately with band good mornings, same thing, three sets of 15 reps. So you're really doing 15 squats and then immediately followed by 15 band good mornings. So more of my build the base phase, my hypertrophy phase. The thing is that once you become an advanced athlete and you really gain some strength, band good mornings aren't going to do that much for your vertical jump. So I feel good putting it right here and will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Next up, we have hang cleans. And I really couldn't put this any lower than will cause great adaptations. However, I am gonna put this in will cause major adaptations in your vertical jump. Then I'm gonna take the next one, hang high pulls, and I'm going to put that in will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. And the only reason is because both of these are going to be great exercises for your vertical jump. Hang cleans, a little bit more of a learning curve. Some coaches don't like that. Some coaches do like that. Hang high pulls is a great alternative if you can't or you don't want to do hang cleans. However, here's my biggest reasoning as to why I put hang cleans in major and hang high pulls in great is because with hang cleans, in order for you to actually catch the hang clean, you need to use as much intent as possible because you're really trying to get it up and catch that barbell. With hang high pulls, if you really fail on the catch, there there isn't a catch. So you could just pull it up and you could do that without as much intent as you would do a hang clean. So that is my reasoning as to why I put hang cleans ahead of hang high pulls. They're both gonna be great, but I just think hang cleans does require you to have a little bit more intent because you don't wanna miss that catch on the hang clean. And while we're here talking about hang cleans, I'm gonna go ahead and bring power cleans out of the bottom of the pack, and I'm going to put power cleans in the will cause major adaptations category. So now we have hang cleans, power cleans, hang high pulls, and then right here we would have regular high pulls. The only reason that I don't have regular high pulls is because it was not present in any of these vertical jump training programs that I have reviewed. So hang cleans and hang high pulls, you're going to be holding the barbell or the trap bar from a hanging position, which is just, you're going to be standing up straight. And then power cleans or regular high pulls, you're going to be pulling the barbell or the trap bar off of the ground. So hang cleans, hang high pulls, a little bit more for the stretch shortening cycle. Power cleans and regular high pulls is going to be much more concentric focused, less on the stretch shortening cycle, but I am going to put power cleans in the major adaptations and I would put high pulls in the great adaptations for the same exact reason. There has to be a bit more intent on the exercise. You have to really have that intent when you're trying to catch the bar out of a hang clean or a power clean. The next exercise that we have is the front squat. And while I don't personally like the front squat as much as the back squat, you can't really deny it. If you took a novice athlete and had them do front squat and taught them the correct form and had them progress fr the front squat, they would see major major adaptations on their body and on their vertical jump. Front squat's going to be more quad dominant, which I found that most, well, not I found, I didn't come up with that. Most basketball players generally are more quad dominant because basketball is a quad dominant sport. So I like the back squat much more than I like the front squat, but we can't deny it. Front squat will get you major adaptations on your vertical jump. Hamstring curls, I'm going to put in great adaptations on your vertical jump because we really can't deny that either. Hamstring curls is just pure strengthening of your hamstrings. I do like a barbell RDL just as much, but hamstring curls, it, this was actually present in a lot of programs. 
I have it in my program. Jordan Kilgannon had it. A lot of guys had hamstring curls. So I'm going to put hamstring curls in will cause great adaptations because it's just pure strengthening of them hands. Hip thrust, guys. This one for me is tough. I really can't put it any lower than will cause great adaptations, but does it belong in major adaptations? Compound movement, great for the post chain, the hamstrings, the glutes, hip extension, really improves your force production. Guys, I really am torn on this one, but I'm just thinking if I took a novice athlete and had them do a bunch of hip thrusts, of course, they're going to see gains on their vertical jump, but are they going to see as many gains as if they just did a back squat or a deadlift, hand cleans, power cleans, front squat? I don't think they are. I'm going to put hip thrusts in great adaptations on your vertical jump and comment down below if you think I'm wrong. Kettlebell swings, I'm going to go ahead and put right next to banded kettlebell swings because it's the exact same exercise without the band. The band is going to pull you back down a little bit more, a little bit more focus on the stretch shortening cycle, but kettlebell swings are better for your vertical jump than banded walks, cable pull throughs, and band good mornings. So I have to put kettlebell swings, especially if you load up and you get heavy and you're really focusing on explosive hip extension and you know what you're doing. Kettlebell swings will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. Hyper extensions, I'm going to put in the good adaptations category. It's a pure strengthening exercise of your posterior chain. Great for the hamstrings, great for the glutes, great for the lower back. Post chain in general, um, you could start with body weight and then you can you can load up, uh, grab a, a 10 pound plate, then a 25 pound plate, then a 45 pound plate. I like it, but I don't think I could put it in great adaptations. If that's all that you did was hyper extensions, are you gonna see crazy amounts of gains on your vert no but you will see good adaptations on your vertical jump lateral lunges i'm also going to put in will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump and while i'm here i'm going to grab regular lunges i think normal lunges are and i don't care what you do if you do reverse lunges if you do forward lunges if you do forward walking lunges if you do seesaw lunges that's where you do a forward lunge and then a reverse lunge and then a forward lunge and then a reverse lunge talk about being sore the next day lunges i'm going to put in will cause gr actually 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 lunges will cause major adaptations on your vertical jump. If you took a novice athlete and you had them start with body weight lunges, and then you had them progress properly, grab some five pound dumbbells, then 10 pound dumbbells, and week after week, they just continued to strengthen their legs with lunges, they would see major adaptations on, your vert on their vertical jump. Bro, you hit the glutes, you hit the hamstrings, you hit the quads, bro, lunges, get you some lunch also bro don't be showing off your bounce when i'm talking to the people we all know you got bounce going back to lateral lunges because i really didn't talk about it a lot i do like some sort of lateral strengthening exercise whether it's a lateral step up or a lateral lunge it's a little bit different but something to strengthen the groin and the adductors I really do like some sort of strengthening exercise within your plan and within your programming. So lateral lunges is gonna be great, but I don't know, bro, we could put this and will cause great adaptations. But if I look at all the other exercises, I don't think I can, bro, can you move, bro? Lateral lunges or angular lunges, I do think that you should have present in your programming, but it's just gonna cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. It's more of, an accessory exercise, an auxiliary exercise that should come behind all of your compound movements that you are really doing to increase your vertical jump. Lunge holds I'm going to put into will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Now, lunge holds are very good. We got the hip flexor in a stretch position. Like if we look at lunges, a lunge hold is going to be great. You're, you're improving motor unit recruitment. You're improving the strength of your glutes, your hamstrings, and your quads. The difference is that, and we could load this up with weight. Let's say we max out, you know, we could do a three minute long lunge hold, by the way, that's complete torture if any of you want to try it. And then after we can max that out, then we add five pound dumbbells and then 10 pound dumbbells. And now we're doing a lunge hold and we're holding dumbbells. You can really improve your strength that way. But the difference is that a lunge hold, you're just holding at that one specific joint angle. Lunges, you're going to be moving through the full range of motion. I don't think lunge holds are going to get you crazy amounts of gains on your vertical jump, especially if you're more of an advanced athlete. But if you are a beginner or novice, I think that you should start with these isometric holds and a lunge hold is going to get you some bounce. Medicine ball throws. I'm actually not the biggest fan of medicine ball throws 
to increase your vertical jump or improve your vertical jump. There's just a lot of other things that you could do that are going to be better, better for power output. However, where I like medicine ball throws is to warm up for the rest of your workout. I, I might start my guys with a medicine ball circuit and we might do some overhead tosses, some rotational wall throws, medicine ball slams. Med ball throws are going to be good to fire up your central nervous system, get you ready, explosive dynamic movement. But how many adaptations are you going to get on your vertical jump if all that you did was medicine ball throws? I'm sorry, I just have to leave it right here. Once again, tell me down in the comments that I'm a bonehead, but I just think medicine ball throws aren't going to do as much as you think they're gonna do for your vertical jump. Nordic curls, this one is difficult as well. I'm finding this to be much more difficult than the plyometric tier list. I'm definitely not putting Nordic curls in major adaptations, absolutely not. Uh, but So we have hamstring curls. Would I rather you do Nordics or hamstring curls? I'd rather you do hamstring curls, to be honest. I'd rather you do RDLs. I'm going to put Nordic curls in good adaptations just because when I look at all the other exercises in good adaptations and when I look at all the exercises in great adaptations like hip thrusts, I'd rather you do do hip thrusts and Nordic curls, like hamstring curls, hang high pulls, banded quarter squats, like Nordic curls just aren't going to get you as many gains as these exercises. So with that said, I am going to put it in will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Next one, we have oscillating rear foot elevated split squat. I'm going to put this one in the will cause good adaptations category. Now this one is very similar to banded quarter squats in the sense that we have the back squat, which should be the meat and potatoes, and then we have banded quarter Quarter squats, which you should sprinkle on top. I'd much rather like a beginner or an intermediate athlete is really going to get many more gains or even an advanced athlete is going to get many more gains from a full range of motion rear foot elevated split squat and then sprinkling on top some oscillatory reps. So oscillatory reps are really meant for you to do a very short range of motion. It's meant to teach the antagonist muscle to relax so that the agonist can contract as fast as possible. So when you contract your agonist muscle, the antagonist is actually working as like a decelerator and oscillatory reps work to tell your antagonist muscle, bro, chill. We're good, bro. We want to jump as high as possible. Stop holding me back. So oscillatory reps are really a contract and relax technique. It's very good, but it should be sprinkled on top of a full range of motion rear foot elevated split squat. And for those reasons, it's staying in good. Pistol squats, I'm going to put in the great adaptations category. Now, pistol squats is the number one exercise for you to increase your force production if you have no equipment. If you wanna do a body weight program or you, you really wanna improve your strength and your force production and you don't have any weights, pistol squats are where you are going to live. Get yourself, you know, load up a, a heavy backpack with books or rocks or gravel or sand or whatever you're gonna do and pistol squats are going to be your best friend. Add some pistol squats with some jumps and some max approach touches and other plyometrics and you're gonna see some gains in your bounce. However, pistol squats are limited in the fact that once you get really heavy, you can't continue to go heavier and heavier and heavier like you could if you did a regular rear foot elevated split squat. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab RFESS, rear foot elevated split squat, and I'm going to put that and will cause major adaptations. This is the best single leg exercise that you could possibly possibly do to improve your single leg force production. And then pistol squats is going to be a little bit lower than that. Will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. Overcoming isometric. I'm going to put in the will cause good adaptations category. Now hear me out. Overcoming isometrics are going to be excellent for advanced athletes. Advanced athletes have higher neural drive. They're going to get more out of overcoming isometrics. I like to do my overcoming isos for about three to five seconds. You know, research recommends five to six seconds. Some people, I think PJF performance, not to not to go against the goat because PJF is my dog. However, in his program, I believe he had eight second overcoming isometrics. And if I do eight seconds pulling as hard as I can, once we get to four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, there's no gas left in my tank. I've pulled as hard as I could. It's it's just, at that point, I'm just hanging onto the bar for dear life. Overcoming isometrics, you can think of as max force production work. And there's pros and cons to this. The pros of overcoming isometrics are that it's 
less risk when you do an overcoming isometric versus like a max back squat. So if you're at the point where you've, you've been squatting for a while and you're at the point of diminishing returns and you want to do some overcoming isometrics because it's less risky than loading tons and tons of weight onto the bar, that's going to be good. However, with an overcoming isometric, you are pushing or pulling against an immovable object in that specific joint angle, which can be great if you want to improve your force production at that specific joint angle, but you're also not getting the full range of motion that you would get in a regular exercise like a rear foot elevated split squat or a heavy back squat or a heavy deadlift or whatever other exercise you're going to do. This past year, I've actually seen good results in adding overcoming isometrics to my in-season programming with the basketball players that I coach in person. So the way that we got our force production work in season was from overcoming isometrics as opposed to heavy lifts. So anyways, take all of that for what it is. Overcoming isometrics, I believe, will get you good adaptations on your vertical jump. If you're more of an advanced athlete, I do think that overcoming isometrics become more beneficial for you at that point in time. Romanian deadlifts. I do think these are the best hamstring exercise that you could do if you are an athlete, but do they deserve a place in major adaptation? I am going to leave RDLs in the will cause great adaptations category. I like RDLs a little bit more than I like hamstring curls. However, I can't put RDLs up here with all of these exercises in the major adaptations category. Reverse hyperextensions, I'm going to put in the will cause good adaptations category, especially if you have a reverse hyperextension machine. Most gyms do not have a reverse hyperextension machine. Um, however, you can get into a normal hyperextension machine and you can um, lift your legs up that way. It's great for the post chain, great for the glutes, the low back. Um, reverse hyperextensions will get you good adaptations on your vertical jump, but if you don't have a reverse hyperextension machine, this is a really hard exercise to load and progressive overload. You're just going to be doing more and more and more reps. So I think it will cause good adaptations on your vertical jump, but after you get so strong, you, you're better off just using different exercises to improve the strength and the power of your posterior chain. Next up, we have reverse step downs. Now, actually, reverse step downs are a really good exercise in improving your single leg strength. Most coaches like to place an eccentric focus on this. Um, it's used for like a prep phase, a build the base phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put reverse step downs in good adaptations, and I'm going to find step ups, and I'm going to put step ups and will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. So reverse step downs is kind of like the little brother and and then once you graduate from reverse step downs, you can start to do dumbbell or barbell step ups. You can actually do front step ups, lateral step ups. I like to do crossover step ups. Step ups are going to cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. Reverse step downs are going to cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Next up, we have rear foot elevated split squat isometric hold. And I'm just going to go ahead and put these next to lunge holds. It's essentially the same thing. Um, I found that in some programs, you know, the trainer likes lunge holds and then certain programs, they did a rear foot elevated split squat hold. And then some programs had both of these, um, but one, your foot is elevated on a bench or a rear foot elevated split squat stand. And the other one, your foot is on the ground, but they're going to essentially do the same thing. They're used for the same reasons. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in good adaptation. Reverse sled drag. I actually use this a lot. I think it's a great exercise. I think it's a great warm up. It's a good quad pump, but as far as increase your vertical jump, I don't think I can even put that in will cause good adaptations in your vertical jump. If all that you did was a reverse sled drag over and over and over, you might see some good gains at first, but at some point, you know, it's not going to increase your vertical jump anymore. So I'm going to put reverse sled drag and will cause minor adaptations on your vertical jump. Next up, we have side step downs. I'm going to go ahead and put side step downs directly next to reverse step downs. They essentially do the same thing. Side step downs or lateral step downs um, are a little bit more focused on your hip. Um, but both of these are going to cause good adaptations on your vertical jump. Both of these are more of preparatory exercises before you get into more intense vertical jump training. Single leg knee extension isometric. Some of you might be wondering why I'm adding these quote unquote knee strengthening exercises into this vertical jump tier list, but I'm not leaving anything out. If this was one of the most common exercises that were seen in the programs that I have reviewed, then I am adding it to this tier list. We're not leaving any stone unturned. So single leg knee extension isometrics, I think will cause minor adaptations in your vertical jump, major adaptations 
in your tendons, but minor adaptations overall on your vertical jump. Seated calf raises, oh goodness, this one is gonna be hard. Seated calf raises, and then I'll go ahead and grab standing calf raises. Calf raises in general. Seated calf raises, hit the soleus. Standing calf raises, focus more on the gastroc. I like standing calf raises, you're back. Welcome back. Standing calf raises, I do feel like are going to get you a little bit more bounce than seated calf raises. However, I am going to put both of these and will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump because there's really nothing else you can do to strengthen your calves, to improve the force production of your calves. Now, plyos, that's what plyos, when we're talking about calf training and ankle training, plyometrics are where it's at, but we're talking about weight training, strength exercises. I got to put standing calf raises and seated calf raises in great adaptations, possibly could put seated calf raises in good, but I'm just going to leave them both there for now because you should be doing both. Single leg RDLs. I feel a little bit biased because I have these in my program and I love single leg RDLs, but will they cause good adaptations or great adaptations? So if we put it up here, we have RDLs and then we have single leg RDLs. You can load up heavier with RDLs, but then again, who's actually maxing out the dumbbell? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. The point is, if we did just single leg RDLs, we took a novice athlete and all that he did was single leg RDLs and progressed those, how many gains would he see on his vertical jump? He would see great Great adaptations on his vertical jump, no questions asked. So I am going to leave it there. Single leg RDLs will cause great adaptations on your vertical jump. Single leg seated pistol squat. This is really just a regression of a normal pistol squat. I'm going to put this in good adaptations because if you took a beginner, a novice, and you had them do you know single leg chair stands or single leg seated pistol squats, they would see some good adaptations on their vertical jump, but probably not much more than that. Tibialis raises. Everybody always gets their panties in a bunch when I put tibialis raises very low on these tier lists. I'm not going to put tibialis raises and don't do this exercise because of course we're not just going to neglect our tibialis anterior. Tibialis raises I'm going to put in minor adaptations because no matter what anybody out there says, if you just do thousands and thousands of tibialis raises and you think it's going to take you from not having any bounce to dunking a basketball, you are sadly mistaken. And then last but not least, we have wall sits. Wall sits I think are going to cause minor adaptations. You know, we could put them in good because we have lunge hold here. Um, and we could add some weight. We can hold a weight plate, but wall sits are really just going to be a regression. You should do wall sits to improve your tendon health or as a regression of a strengthening exercise until you get into all these more intense and better exercises. But guys, this has been the tier list of weight training exercises that are going to help you dunk a basketball. If you're interested in a full vertical jump training program that has not all, but most of these vertical jump exercises progressed and periodized perfectly for you to get as many gains as possible, then check out my vertical jump training programs and my training programs in general. The link will be down below in the description of this video and in the pinned comment, but I will see you in the next video. Peace.